Andrea, thank you so much for sitting down with us here at ZGO. We're really excited to have you here, learn more about you, learn more about your work. Um, and we're really excited to talk about Supernova and your line in general. But actually, before we get into the scents themselves, mm -hmm. we wanted to ask you a little bit about you and your process as an artist, your creative process, because we do know that you, know, you come from the world of art, mm -hmm. fashion, design, and we're just really curious about um, you know, how that's shaped your, uh, your role as a perfumer and your life in general. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here today. And the store is absolutely gorgeous. It's just interesting to come and like visit the shops. Like I think it's just so important also as a creator just to talk to the people and you know just get a vibe of the store. And you know you guys have been very welcoming. And thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a different story um, that I have because you know people have asked me like. You know, how did you come about creating your brand? And I usually just say it was decided for me because mm -hmm. at the beginning it was a process just for art exhibitions. And mm -hmm. uh, so they were never really meant to be worn mm -hmm. as a product. Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting when we were creating them for the shows. I think the first thing that was quite interesting that we were creating good fragrance. So because as an artist, I put a lot of work into um, what I was putting in the gallery and actually people wanted to wear it. Mm -hmm. but. The first ever brief, I told um, the perfumer that I was working with, like, it doesn't have to smell great. Right. But the first one was very good and that was smart. And I often do think, like, if that one would have not been good at all, I'd probably be doing something else today. Um. Uh, because the first one was very good and then it just kind of kept rolling. And I think at the shows, like, people would kind of, sometimes you would have samples and people would just steal them, you know. Right. And people would come back into the gallery, like, can I buy it? So yeah. it was like a period of like, two or three years where I was just working like this. Yeah. And I never thought about creating it into a line until later on. Okay. I think it was just demand, you know. Yeah. We created something that people wanted to wear yeah. without thinking about it. Right, Yeah. right. Yeah, sometimes I feel like the most beautiful creations in art come from happy surprise like exactly. that. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, that actually leads to another question before I hand it off to Minzy as well. You know, when you're creating something these days that may not, um, you know, experimenting with new accords that may have never been blended before in the world of perfume or you're, you're taking a risk with a potential scent, you know, do you now at your stage in your in your line in your mm -hmm, creation, do you mm -hmm. run it by anyone? Like, how do you kind of do that initial like testing, or do you just kind of go with it? Um, I just run it by people. Yeah. Um, I think that's the best way to do it because it's more for me selfishly. It's not so much about what people like. Yeah, yeah. It's more just is it a good fragrance, and you yeah. know, will people want to wear it, and does it last? Okay. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. So, and even if the reaction is not great, you know, it's maybe something that I still want to really. So, right. um, you know, being in the cocoon in Iceland yeah. and creating there, I think, um, is very helpful for me because I don't really think about what else is going on with the trends and so on. Right. But sometimes the trends just happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm thinking something and then somebody else was thinking something. Yeah. I think it's like that with anything, with like it's fashion or beauty. Yeah. So it is just funny how that can happen without, yeah. you know, it's just something in the air. But yeah. no, I selfishly release what I want to wear. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So first of all, I just want to say that thank you for being here today. I'm such a big fan of you and your brands. I have read everything about your brands and have tried every single wow. fragrance from your brand. And thank you. I'm so fascinated to say the least. So um, the first questions I want to ask you, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our audiences um, today that are still new with your brands want to ask you, um, was there any ever any like down or uncertainty when you released such a non-conventional perfumes in, in the niche space and um, how did you deal with that? Do you mean like doubt if it would be, if it would be like successful? Mm -hmm. I never think about it. I okay. never ever give it another thought. I think mm -hmm. it's just very, um, like I said, I took my time with everything and I think maybe just the pressure of, I think a lot of brands maybe have a pressure that they have to perform. Yes. So it was also important to me that I'm like privately owned company and mm -hmm. like I can do it in my own time. Yeah. And I like it when people don't like something immediately, you know, I kind of get a kick out of it. Yeah. You know, I don't really feel like it has to be a su super successful launch. Like yeah. sometimes I have to say I get a little bit worried when I launch. I think when I launched Light Source, it just wasn't taking off at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then like eight months later, it just went like bam. And now it's like one of the best sellers in the collection. So wow. you can't panic. You can have to yeah. trust what yeah, you've trust done. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, sure, you go through maybe a little bit of a panic stage. But mm -hmm. um, I just always trust in what I do. And I just never look back. Like, 
Wow, that's, yeah. that's really amazing because I feel like a lot of the artists, you know, when we're releasing something, we want to express ourselves, but at yeah. the same time, of course, we want to get like received well by the audience too. Yeah, of course. But I, you know, I yeah. really admire that you yeah. just go no, for no, no. it. You know, trust your instinct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not everybody has to like it. Like I said, sometimes yeah. I like mm-hmm. the other reaction as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it gets people talking, exactly. That's, that's and that's what art is about. Yes, you know, yes, yes. you you can hate it or you can love it. You know, yes. Yes. but you get a reaction and you remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I wanted to uh, circle back to you mentioned briefly just uh, being a perfumer in Iceland, mm-hmm. and I know that you know Minzy and I, as well as the audience, would just love to understand a little bit what the perfume human scent landscape and world like is, is in Iceland and um, you know are you kind of one of the pioneers um, you know how long has creating scent been around in Iceland um, if you know it yeah. can answer that no, yeah. I mean it's tiny yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah it is very very small I mean, yeah. I think, I mean you've been there you yeah, know how small yeah. it is I mean even just the beauty brands I was yeah. doing something on like we have like four Icelandic beauty brands or something yeah, so yeah. definitely not a lot of um, perfume brands and we are of course the first one mm-hmm. but uh, like I said because there wasn't really plan to become a brand you right. know, we never really thought about it like yeah. that but I mean it does everything is sort of has become more Iceland inspired mm-hmm. you know throughout the years yeah but yeah it's it's tiny yeah I mean I, th- I think it's quite unique to be I mean, I'm very proud and I want to push like more beauty to come out of Iceland yeah and more brands to kind of you know have the courage to do things that because when I started it is I mean you know the perfume industry it's a bit like you know uh, to be you know the French and the Italian this is what they do and they do it great you sure. know yeah you know, we have the fishing industry and I yeah. have somebody that's coming from a different angle yeah but sometimes it's good just to shake it up a little bit yeah you know and I've been fortunate to be embraced by the world yeah. of perfumery yeah. so I think it's just you have to think outside the box a little bit and not be scared and not be scared yeah. kind of a fun question in terms of thinking outside the box as well um, and going back to little sources of inspiration are you yourself inspired by any particular um, I mean you mentioned thinking about uh, the character from Basic Instinct, but yeah. any artists in particular, like um, you know, that you can name that have been an inspiration to you. Um, visual. Art. I mean, it's just. I think it's also fashion for yeah. me. Like a Rick Owens is a big inspiration for me. I think just people that come up and do their own thing and are not scared. Yeah. I mean, you can always sort of go back and reference the masters, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think I also like to look at what people are doing today. Yeah. And I like in fashion and beauty. I like people that are not scared to take yeah. chances and just you know. Yeah. Do something something a little bit different so absolutely it is I'm obviously fashion yes. and art inspired as well for sure wonderful yeah Rebel, kind of rebels without a cause. yeah exactly so I know that you mentioned earlier that to for you a perfume lasts longer is very mm-hmm. important mm-hmm. so I just want to ask you uh, what the most important standard you hold for your brand is it about the performance like if it's long lasting it projects or is the sense itself yeah i think it's definitely the quality the i quality. mean we have to be very yeah i think it just has to in terms of not only the oils mm-hmm. like i said when we actually went to create the bottles um went to Italy for, I mean, it was a great excuse to go to Milan for three years. <laughs> I will be there for three years to create the brand. Yeah. And, you know, we walked into the bottle factory and they were like, you're not going to be able to make this. You're not at Dior or Chanel, you know, yeah. but it was just something that we really wanted to do. But when I sort of made the decision coming out of the gallery, she was like, now this is going to be a brand. Mm-hmm. And my name, I never even thought about putting my name on it. Obviously, I never think about anything, but I, people ask me, like, why did you put your name on yeah. It was just through the shows. But then I thought, if my name is really going to be on a brand, and mm-hmm. we have to make it good, you know? Yes. So it's the yeah. standard from the bottle to the spray to the cap to the click of the cap to the oil mm-hmm. to... And now we're actually packing everything in Iceland, which is yeah. I'm very proud of. So we can use sustainable alcohol in Iceland yeah. and we can, you know, we have people packing in Iceland for us. So mm-hmm. And using the aesthetic water as well. So, and I think we've... Honestly, I think I've had, like, not a single return of just because of the quality. Awesome. And we spent... I think people are in a hurry. We spend a lot of time creating the brand. Mm-hmm. And... I just knew it would be worth it, just, yeah. you know, because I don't want the customer to be disappointed. I'm a customer. Yeah. Yes. You know, I want something to be better when I open it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. spending money on it, you know. Yeah. That's so I always think of myself as a customer. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And um, I also have read that you say, for you, like, Sen is a linear yes. thing. Can you elaborate on that? I think it just started as the drawings, you know, for the shows, um, and it was just something that came to my mind that like scent can kind of travel like a drawing mm-hmm. or a pencil drawing. Mm-hmm. But I also think that I just like how it travels. I mean, this 
we started creating something in Iceland, you know, and now mm-hmm. it's traveled here, it's yeah. traveled to LA, it's traveled to Asia, it's tra- you know, so I kind of almost imagine like the sun traveling like <laughs> through yeah. the air, you know, yeah. with people yeah. and like I think the it's people like, wear it all around the world, you yeah. know, yeah. and I think that's the beauty about it, the sun, yeah. so that it's it, invisible and yeah. you can travel. Yeah. It's like an invisible connection between people. Absolutely. People. Yes. Yeah, and exactly. That's such yeah. a nice idea. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Forms a network all around. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's that's how I feel about fragrance too. Yeah. Like I love the scent itself, but the connections that I can make through the community yes. who like of people who love fragrances yeah. are, you know, that's amazing. For sure. That's yeah. the most important yeah. thing. Yeah. Thank you. I guess, you know, kind of to start to wrap things up um, yeah. what um, so first of all what is some advice you might have to people kind of entering the niche space mm-hmm. and wanting to be perfumers mm-hmm. um, if, if any yeah um, like I said I think it just has to come from you mm-hmm. you know I wouldn't really be looking at don't do a lot of research I mean mm-hmm. this is going to sound terrible but really don't do a lot <laughs> yeah. of research yeah. don't go into shops and smell everything yeah. you should really just start kind of from you and the ground up and yeah. just and you know, of course, the idea has to be a little bit original. Yes. And but you have to dig deep because you have to put yourself out there. I mean, that's what I did, and then people are like, exactly again, like, why did you put? I mean, you're my name. Like, yeah. I'm. I have to stand by what I do. Yeah. So I kind of like people that do that. You know, they yeah. put their name on it. You know, yeah. I mean, it has to be good. You know, don't hide behind anything. Right. You know? And then just go for it. And it also, just has to be a little bit fun. I just think yes. everything is so serious. Yes. <laughs> it's just like have a little fun, see what yeah. happens. It's yeah. not like you know, like doesn't time. work, do something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's totally. Just, yeah. I love that. It, and it takes a while. Nothing is going to happen in one year or two right. years. You have to just breathe easy and like, right. you know, see the end goal. Right. Oh, that's, a, that's amazing yeah. advice. And I guess my last question would be, what are you excited about this year, in this upcoming year, 2024? Or, you know, whether it be a trip coming up or just uh, something you're looking forward to. You mean like in fragrance or just in general? Yeah, fragrance. Uh, it could be fragrance, could be general. Yeah, let's start with uh, fragrance because we're here. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am working on something new okay. that I'm quite excited about. Oh. Um, so a bit out of the box for me so yeah. I always like to challenge myself a little bit awesome um, and then just I'm building a house oh that's right we're doing a new brand space in Iceland so I hope everybody that comes to Iceland I literally everybody that asks me if they can come I answer them and they can come <laughs> well can we yeah. come yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> that's if you're awesome. a perfume nerd you're a part of my world awesome. and you're welcome to come <laughs> so, so absolutely exciting. yeah that's so exciting that's what I'm doing now yeah Thank you so much, Andrea. This was amazing. Learned so much. And yeah, looking forward to the rest of the Thank day. you. Thank yeah. you, Thank girls. you. Thank you again. You know, I'm so happy that you're here today and, you know, talking with us and get to know you and your brand better. But yeah, I'm really, Thank really you. appreciate. Thank you so much. Happy to meet people that appreciate fragrance. <laughs>